Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does make a big difference when you do that. So today folks, I'm going to be giving this guitar here a new set of pots. And these are them here, the Vintage Inspired Pots, the VI Pots as they're known. And as anybody who's ever even thought about rewiring a thin line guitar will know, getting the electronics in and out of one of these is an absolute arse ache. Because unlike something like a Les Paul where you just pop the control cavity open at the back, throw the pots in and jobs are good. And with these, you have to kind of thread all the electronics pre-wired down through either the F-hole, if they will fit, or the pickup cavity. And if you've ever played that kid's game Operation, where you've got to kind of try and pick model bones out of a human without it buzzing, that's a bit like what the job is on this. It's like doing brain surgery, trying to get the electronics in the right place. So today, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you a few tips that I've come up with over the years. These are not professional tips by any stretch of the imagination, but there are a few things I do when, re when rewiring a thin line, just to make the job that little bit easier and make sure that everything works and is installed in the right place. So here we go then. Now I've just popped the knobs off so we can see exactly what is going on here. Now the first thing I'm going to have to do is take these strings off, but because I'm shooting a before and after video comparing these stock Gibson pots to the VI pots, I'm going to take the strings off very, very carefully. I'm not going to snip them because I need to put the exact same strings back on at the end so we can do a complete like for like. Because of course if we uh, do the first half of the video using older strings, then put a new set on, the guitar will sound brighter even if we hadn't changed any of the electronics. So we want to keep everything as consistent as we can for the video. So I'm going to take the strings off but I've also got to be careful because this trapeze tailpiece will fall down onto the guitar when I do so. This will be coming off because that's where the ground wire comes out to earth the entire guitar. So I'm going to have to do this as carefully as I can but uh, fingers crossed it should go absolutely fine. <laughs> So the strings are now slack, um, but before I actually remove them, I'm going to take this duster and just kind of tuck it underneath the tailpiece there, because that way if the tailpiece does drop onto the guitar, it's not going to damage the finish at all. Now a little tip for taking strings off if you need to put them back on again afterwards. Now usually if I was doing a job like this I would just treat the guitar to a new set of strings, I wouldn't bother trying to put old ones back on. But as I said we're doing a before and after so it's important to do that. If you put a constant upward pressure on the string as you wind it off the peg, then what will happen is at the top of the string where it goes round the peg, then it won't come off really raveled up, you'll stretch it out and it just makes it so much easier for then threading the string back through the string tree at the end of the job. So I don't know if you can see there, we've got a little bit of bend, but we can easily straighten that out and pop it through the peg once we're done. Right, so the strings are all off now, apart from the low E, which is a little bit jammed in the tailpiece because I use a really heavy gauge string, it's kind of a bit stuck, but that's not a problem for now. So I'm now going to take the tailpiece off because, as I said, that's where the earth wire comes out of the guitar. Right, so the tailpiece is off now. Now the first big tip I'd have for you when you're doing a complete disassembly of a guitar like I'm doing today, is make sure you keep all the components from each area of the guitar separate from each other. So I've got the two screws and the uh, kind of strap pin from the tailpiece. So I'm gonna keep these four bits completely separate from everything else, because the last thing you want is at the end of the day, when you're trying to put everything back together to be working out which screw goes where. You need to be very, very clear on that. So I have lots of little piles all around in front of me of various little components from the guitar. Now another thing that I have managed to completely forget to do myself, uh, which is kind of a daft sounding thing but it really is important, if you've got any jewellery on, like a watch or a bracelet, make sure you take it off when you're working on a guitar because um, otherwise you're going to keep catching it on the finish and you run the risk of putting some gouges and everything. So here we are then, now we're kind of in a position to start work on the electronics, which is the purpose of this job. Now with this particular guitar, on some guitars you can fit the knobs down through the sort of larger part of the F-hole, you can't on this one, so it has to go in through the cavity of the bridge pickup, which is fine, it actually makes it a bit easier than having to go down through the F-hole. But one thing that you need to be very, very careful with when doing this 
is once the knobs are in, once these are the, the potentiometers are inside the guitar, you won't know which one is supposed to go in which hole. It's a bit of potluck. So I've devised a little technique, um, I don't know whether the professionals do this, but it works for me, which is using a piece of cardboard. Now, before I pop the old knobs out, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of push down a little bit on there, not enough to kind of damage anything, but just to leave some sort of indentations on the other side of the cardboard. And I'm then gonna use a screwdriver to put some holes in this cardboard where those indentations were. So here we go, we've now got our sort of nice green template of where the holes are going to go on the guitar and they all match up perfectly, as you can see there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna write on here exactly which pot is which. And now that they're marked out, we can take the new pots and put them in from the underside so that they form an exact template that we can then use for installing all the wiring. So here we are, we've got our new template here, and as you'll see, they kind of match up perfectly to where everything needs to go. So now, when we take these electronics out, we can literally just take one wire at a time and swap it over from the old pot to the new pot. It just makes everything so much easier. But also what I'm gonna do, just to make it kind of easier when putting everything back in at the end, is I'm going to color code the pot. You can kind of see a little bit of pen on these pots here, maybe where I've done this before. So you need three kind of Sharpies of different colors and you can then mark the top of the shaft here. So you've got three different color pots and one plane obviously, so that when you can see the top of the pots inside the guitar, you can see exactly which color needs to come up through which hole. Otherwise you've got four identical looking pots and you can't work out which needs to go where. So it just makes life so much easier later on down the line. Right, so we're pretty good to go in terms of disassembling the current electronics. We've got everything marked up, ready to install the new ones. So, as I said, to get the electronic out of this guitar, you need to take the bolts off, drop it in, and then pull them up through the uh, bridge pickup cavity. The neck pickup can stay where it is, but I do have to take this one out in order to access the electronics. Right, now before I take the electronics out of the guitar, we are gonna have to kind of sit the electronics here. So obviously you don't want to have that on your nice shiny nitro finish. So what I'm gonna do is put a towel over the guitar so we can completely protect that finish. And ultimately we are gonna have to solder the new electronics over the top of the guitar because we have to get the pickup wires going through and up out of the cavity. So we can't do it elsewhere and then kind of put the pickups in because the pickups have to go in from the top. They won't fit in from underneath. So it's all a bit of a headache doing this. But now I'm just gonna kind of carefully take these electronics out. And here we go, we've got the old electronics out here. So the next step is to start taking the wires one by one, obviously if you know how to kind of wire a guitar off by heart, it's very easy. But you know, for me, I'm just gonna take the wires one by one and swap them from the old parts to the new. So I've started my soldering here, and you see the uh, pickup wire from the bridge pickup is all installed now. Now one thing that it's really good practice to get into when soldering, but it's especially important with a thin line, is at the moment this bumblebee capacitor isn't soldered on to this volume pot here, but as you, can, you might be able to see from this shot, I've kind of kinked the wire around the lug on the pot, so there's a good mechanical grip there even though it's not soldered in place yet. Now this is really important because when we push the electronics back down inside, the absolute last thing you want 
is to get everything up into the right place, the guitar, plug it in and find that something's come loose. So it's extra important with a thin line to get a good mechanical grip before you solder, just as a bit of a fail safe. You don't want anything pulling out. Another very important thing to do when you're soldering a guitar, not just a thin line, but any guitar, is as you go along, check. Check every connection you make. So I've just wired in the new volume pot for the bridge pickup, which of course is down here. So if I tap it with a screwdriver, it's working. There we go. So it's all working now on that uh, particular pot, so we can carry on and do the rest. So here we are then, the soldering is all done. It's one of the neater soldering jobs I've done over the years, which I'm quite happy about. Now, before I pop these electronics back in the guitar, there's one last thing I need to do. As I said at the start of the video, the earth wire that creates the sort of ground loop through the strings and the metal components on the top of the guitar comes from underneath the tailpiece down here. So what I've done is I've put a length of uh, plastic coated wire through the hole and I've threaded it up through the pickup cavity here. So all I need to do is take this lead and connect it to the back one of the pots so that all the metal components on the top of the guitar are then going to be earthed nicely. So now that everything's wired it's just a case of getting these pots and the switch back in the guitar, which is very much easier said than done. So I'm just going to go over these pots again with the relevant colors just to make absolutely sure I can see them once they're inside the guitar. And then we'll slowly put each of these individually down into the cavity and try to position them in place underneath exactly where they need to go. So the colours are all marked up now and we're ready to start putting these electronics in. Now we can pretty much get these pots up from the underside without a huge amount of difficulty but one of the hardest things to do is to get the jack in place because there's no way to get in and pick it up. So what I do is I use a length of fairly sturdy wire because what we're going to do now is we're going to thread this down through the hole where the jack is going to go. Thread it into the middle of the guitar and up here like so and then we're going to put the jack with the kind of knurled, bracket, um, knurled washer, sorry, and to stop it spinning around. And we're going to put that through there and wrap it round the contact like so. Now what this will allow us to do is to be able to pull up, but then when we want to get it off, we can just push down and it will slide straight off. We can pull it through the guitar and we can get rid of the wire. So we're now going to start getting all this stuff back in place. So the electronics are all inside now, but they're nowhere near to where they need to be. So I'm going to use a small screwdriver just to go down through the F-hole and slowly and gently manipulate the pots into roughly the correct position. So we've now got the jack up through the hole, and all we need to do is take a washer and thread it down the wire, like so. And then take the nut, thread it down the wire again, and then slowly do it up just sort of finger tight for now so it doesn't fall back through. And now that's done up, we can push down, and the wire comes inside the guitar, pulls straight through, you can reach in and pull it out. Easy as that. So now we've got the bridge tone pot right underneath the hole where it needs to be. And the best way I found to get these up here is to use a small flathead screwdriver and pop it down the middle of the shaft of the pot. Then get your finger from the underneath and kind of manipulate it up a little bit like a sort of like a puppet. So you can then move it up into the hole. And then for this, you want one of the pointed washers because that marks where the volume is. Slot that on the top. And then we want a nut, slot that on the top, and there we go.
And there we go, everything is in. So all I need to do now is tighten up these nuts. Now, as with any guitar, but again, especially for a thin line, you want to kind of get them up so that they're snug, but you don't want to over tighten them because the last thing you want to do is crack the top. So just do them up so you feel a little bit of resistance in the nut, but then once it starts to bite, leave it alone. And that's pretty much it. All that's left to do now is reassemble the guitar. And the last thing we need to do before we put the tailpiece on is create this earth wire. So the tailpiece is going on next. So we need to create this earth wire. So all I'm going to do is pull it so it's snug, give it a little bit of slack because we want it not to be taut, but we don't want to be banging around inside the guitar. And then I'm going to take my wire cutters, snip, then take the last little bit off the end, like so. So we've got a nice sort of splayed bit of metal, and then that will puff in just a little bit more, and that will sit against the metal. And that will create the earth loop through the tailpiece, down the strings, in the tuners, all the metal bits on the top of the guitar will now be earthed. So everything's inside now, it's just a case of putting the pit guard and the strings on. So before we put the strings on, just to double check, even though we already have, let's just check that everything is working as it should. So there we are folks, the lovely 330 now has some shiny new VI pots in it. Now yes rewiring a thin line is a bit of a nightmare, especially compared to wiring a Les Paul or a Tele or something, but as with everything it does come with practice, it didn't actually take me too long to do this today, the first time I did a thin line it took me about two days, it really was horrible, but there is a knack to it and uh, hopefully some of the tips in this video will help you. Making a template out of cardboard really, really is worth its weight in gold, and especially marking the top of the pots with Sharpie with colours, so you can kind of see just from through the tiny little hole which pot needs to go where, that really does help too. And the little tip of wiring a um, bit of metal wire around the jack, but not around the actual mech, just around the edge of it, so you can then push it down, it'll just fall straight inside the guitar, but you can pull it up quite hard to get it in the hole, that works really well too. So if you have any tips for wiring a thin line that I haven't covered today, please do comment underneath and let me know. I'm learning just as much as you guys in these videos. But uh, yeah, I hope this video helps you rewire your thin line if you are uh, brave enough to undertake it. So thank you for watching folks, please do carry on subscribing to this channel, it really does help when you do that and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.